Hey guys, welcome back to Sudoku Mania. So, continuing our journey with the Sudokus from the Grand Prix. We have a Thermo Sudoku and this was again created by Jonas Gleam. I know it's frequently but I'm not picking up uh, these uh, puzzles in any specific order. I mean, I'm just grabbing whichever comes to my hand first. So, there's no favoritism here towards any author per se. So, the rules of classic Sudoku apply. Digits cannot repeat in any row, column or a 3x3 box. Additionally, a few shapes are marked on the grid, grey lines, which are in the shape of a thermometer. Now, what the rule implies is, starting from the bulb to the end of the thermometer, the digits will strictly be in an increasing order. Now, it does not mean that the difference has to be constant between the digits. I can have a 1 and a 3 here followed by a 4, 5. Alright? So, it's not necessary that they have to be in sequential order. But yes, they have to be in an increasing order. And when I look at this puzzle, I see that there are only two digits given. Now, people might wonder how do we start on this. The best way to start these puzzles is to count how many cells does the thermometer pass through. For example, when I look at this uh, thermometer, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it passes through 8 cells. So does this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. What it means is, I can have the digits starting from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, the minimum digit that can be placed at the last cell is 8. However, when I look at it from a reverse order, the highest digit being a 9, I can have a 9 here, which can be followed by an 8, a 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and a 2. Now, the reason I use these two directional placement of digits for the pencil marks is this way it gives me a clear idea what would be the minimum and the maximum value that can come in the, at the tips of the thermometer simultaneously identifying the digits along the path. All right. Similarly, I go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right. And with the max number, it will be 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, I know you guys are jumping the gun here. You have identified the next step before I could finish. Good job. Now that we have identified the pencil marks for these two thermometers, let's have a closer look at row 5. I have an 8, 9 here. I have an 8, 9 here. So that basically gives me the pair of 8 and 9. Now, where each digit would come, that we'll know only later on. But we know for sure the 8 and 9 are logged in these two cells. Hence, the 8 cannot be in row 5, column 5, so that has to be a 7, which makes this a 6, a 5, 4, a 3, a 2, and a 1. Clear? Now, because we have the 4 here, I cannot have a 4. So, this is a 3, and the lesser number here would be a 2 and a 1. Right? So, we have made some progress. Now, let's have a look at this thermometer. Again, going by the minimums, this is a 1, 2. I can't have a 3 or a 4 because it's already available in the column. So, this would have to be a 5, 6, 7, 8. And going in the reverse direction with the max, I have a 9, 8. I can't have a 7. So, this has to be a 6, 5, 2, 1. So, using both the minimum and the maximum possibilities, we see that 1, 2, 5, 6 are the common digits in both directions. Hence, we can blindly leave these numbers as it is. We get a pair of 7, 8 and 8, 9. Right? So now by classic rule, 6, 6, this becomes a 6. The 7 cannot be in this. Or before we proceed with the 7, let's eliminate from this one. So this will be a 7, which basically means this has to be a higher number, 8. And a 9, so this becomes my 8, alright? And in this column, this will become a 9 and a 7, alright? Now, if that's a 7, this would 
a b and 8 and a 9 so i have a 7 7 this can't be a 7 this is a 7 again a 9 with this 9 and i get the box complete so 1 1 and this is my 1 so this has to be a 3 4 which makes this a 3 4 and this has to be a 2 5 good Now, the 1 for box 9 is locked in column 8. Now we see that 1 cannot be in these 3. And 1 being the smallest digit that can be placed, we know for sure it will never be, it can never be on the path of the thermometer till the tip. Because that would mean if this was a 1, I would require a number which is lesser than 1 to be at the bulb, which is just not possible so the one if it all it has to be on the thermometer will always be at the bulb just like how the nine would be always at the tip because we can't have any uh, digit greater than nine that can be placed in the grid right so this one cannot be on this it's not here neither can it be here so the one can only be placed in these two cells and by classic rules this is logged in row 3, row 2 and this would be my 1 because the 1 cannot be in these 2. Alright, so we got one more. Now, 9, 9. So 9 has to be in these 3 and just like we discussed just now, the 9 will always be on the tip. When the 8s follow suit, so this has to be an 8. Correct? Now, how does this 8 impact box 1. When I look at this 8, it cannot be in the row 2 of box 1. Neither can it be in row 3 because if I have the 8 at the bulb, then obviously I can't have 4 digits which are greater than 8 that has to be placed. Right? So, 8 can be here. It cannot be placed here because you already have an 8 and if this was an 8, it would make it 9 and 10, which would just not be possible. And we know 8 cannot be in this, correct? So we have got an 8, this becomes an 8 and with this 9 will not be on the thermometer because it is not lesser than 8 to be before the. So my 9 would be placed in these two. And by classic rules 9, 9, this becomes a 9 with this being a 9. Alright, now let's see, we have the 8. This has to be less than 8, I can't have a 7 or a 6. So this can be a 5, this can be a 4, 3, I can't have a 2, so 1. So I know for sure this will be a 1 because 1 being the least number, I can't have a 2. If this was a 3, 4, this would become a 5 and I would not have an intermediate number that can be placed between 5 and 8 because the 6 and 7 are already occupied. However, this is a 1, this does not necessarily be a 3, it can still be a 2, this can be a 3, 4 and this can be a 4, 5. It is not necessary that I need to have a 5 along the thermometer. It's just that the 1 was a dead shot number that could be placed in the thermometer. I cannot have any other number apart from one that can be at the bulb. But again, looking at this, I have a 3, 4 pair. So this cannot be a 4, so this becomes a 5. And since this cannot be a 2, this cannot be a 2. There's only one place for the 2, which is here. And by classic rules, 2, 2, this is a 2, 5, and another 2. Right? Now let's have a look at this thermometer. 9, 8. Then if I'm going by the highest numbers, this can be a 7, this can be a 6. I can't have a 5, but I can have a 4. Alright? But if I were go, go, to go by the least, 1 and 2 are already there in the row. So I can have the next number 3. But if this is, so this can be a 4. This cannot be a 5 because we already have that. So this can be a 6. 
So again, I get a pencil mark for this thermo. But again, when I look at it, again, I get a pair of three and four. I just love how the pairs are working together to eliminate the jitters. So if this is a three or a four here, the three cannot be here. Neither can I have a four in this. So if this is a six, this has to be a seven. And seven, if this seven gives me a seven here. All right. So this is a 3, 4, so this has to be a 7 and a 9 because of that. So the missing digits for the row are 3, 4 and 6. 3 cannot be here, so this is a 4, 6. This is a 3, 4, 6. Alright. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4 are locked. 5, 7 and 8. 7 and 8 are here, so this is a 5, this is 7 and 8. 8, 8, 8. And if this is 5, this becomes my 6, so that's a 3, so this is a 4-6 pair, but I know the 1, 4 and 5 are locked in column 8 for box 9, right, because this is a 1, 4, this is a 1, 5, so this is a triplet here, so this has to be a 6 and a 4, and the last digit is a 3, which makes this a 4 and a 3. And this would be a 6 followed by a 5. And the missing digits for row 5 are 1 and 6. So with this 1, this has to be a 6 and a 1. 2, 4, 5 makes this 4, 5. 2, 4, 2, 4, 5. And for row 7, the missing digits are 1, 3, 4 and 8. So with this 3 and 8, this will be a 1, 4. 1, 2 is not possible, 3 years, 4 years, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And once again, we have a pair of 3 and 4. So obviously, this 4 gets eliminated. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I require a 6 and a 9. 9, 6, and 4, 5. So 7 has to be here. This is again a 4, 5. 1, 5, so 2 has to be in these two cells. This can't be a 2, so this is my 2. 1, 5, you know, finally a breakthrough because of this 1. That's a 5, so that's 4, 1, 3, 8. So 4, 5, 3, 4, 4, 3, 3, 4, 1. Oh, sorry. This was an 8, this becomes a 5, and that's a 1. Another wonderful and a classy construction, you know. I just love the way how the pairs were playing around together. I know this was by no means a very difficult thermometer, but it's right up there when it comes to the beauty and the class of construct. So another great job done by the German author. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do like and subscribe to the channel. Let us know your feedbacks through the comments and what you would like to see next. So till the time we come up with the next puzzle from this GP set. Happy solving!